Hello and welcome to Witness. I'm Raggy Omar. Belarus is said to be Europe's last dictatorship, a country damned as an outpost of tyranny by the United States. Despite some slight easing of tensions with the West in recent years, President Alexander Lukashenko still rules Belarus with a rod of iron, and critics of his regime fear for their very lives when they voice their opposition. Yet, despite these oppressive conditions, Belarus is home to an extraordinary underground theatre troupe, a band of dedicated actors who use their creative force to speak out for democracy. Banned by the authorities and performing secretly in private houses, the troupe has no regular base, gets no press reviews, and the audiences are kept in the dark about the venue until the very last minute. In Free Theatre of Belarus, filmmakers Tom Dumi Khan and Karim Shah follow acclaimed Canadian playwright Elisa Livergant as she secretly collaborates with the troupe in Minsk. It is a rare glimpse into this closed society and some of the courageous performers trying to change it. <laughs> Elisa Livergant is a London-based performance artist. She's staged her work on both sides of the Atlantic. Now she's traveling to Belarus, a country where artistic expression is suppressed. After months of planning, Elisa's about to join a theatre group that's so controversial they have to perform in secret. They're a company that actually isn't allowed to practice in their own country. Their work is considered seditious. They are producing work which comments upon the, the current political situation in Belarus and on its leadership. The Free Theatre of Belarus is planning to stage an underground performance in which Elisa has been invited to take part. People who've gone to work for the Free Theatre before have been not allowed entry because it's been revealed that they were going to work with them. But I have no idea how that's all going to pan out. The troupe has performed around the world, receiving critical acclaim from the likes of playwright Tom Stoppard and Václav Havel. Now they're bringing their message back home, to Minsk, the capital of Belarus. Elisa is collected by Ilya Kuznetsov, a local journalist trusted by the Free Theatre. Have you gone to see anything of the Free Theatre? Yes, I think it's great, it's courageous, and it really moved me, what I saw. I even took my mum, yeah. who's um, already quite old, she's in her 60s, and she loved it as well, but she said, be careful, son, they will go after you if you continue working with them. <laughs> yeah. What's Minsk like? How do you find it? It's a bit weird the political situation of course but everything here is black and white you either pro lukashenko or against lukashenko the regime of president alexander lukashenko has been condemned by the eu and us for election rigging and abuses of human rights Many of his political opponents have mysteriously disappeared. Lukashenko has been dubbed the last dictator of Europe. On the outskirts of the city is a derelict house. In two days' time, 
the Free Theatre will stage a show here, illegally. Nikolai Kaliezin's a journalist. He and human rights activist Natalia Kolyada began the Free Theatre in 2005. Oh my God, she was coming to us. <laughs> Elisa hasn't seen them for 18 months. Today, she'll have to take a back seat as the Free Theatre needs to rehearse in the only <laughs> space available to the troupe. This is our big stage here. And this is this famous wall that was broken for us. Spectators sit everywhere where it's possible. Sometimes we have 80 people, it's a terrible, because they just sit at the windows, they sit on the floor, so everywhere. Performing in Minsk is a bold act, as the group have found out to their cost. Previous shows have been raided by the Belarusian authorities. We saw a special division of police, KGB and uh, district police. And special division of police, uh, they had hamlets, ribbon sticks. <laughs> it was like a real detective story. We had French and Dutch citizens here, pregnant women, small kids from five to nine years. And uh, they said that all of you are under arrest and follow us to police department. It was a major setback. But the police action was condemned in the international press, leading to the release of both actors and audience. It's this increasing support that's encouraged the free theater to risk a return to the same space. But the authorities still keep an eye on the group. This is the army theater of Belarus. Marina Yuryevich used to be an actress here. She wanted to leave Belarus to work abroad with Nikolai and Natalia. First, she had to meet the secret police. But Marina failed to deliver any incriminating evidence. She was fired from her job in the army theater. Now she works full time for the free theater. Back at the secret venue, the intense round of rehearsals is underway. The group's wider ambition is to build support for the opposition in Belarus. There's a lot riding on their performance. Natasha and Nikolai have a huge amount of responsibility in terms of a public face of free theatre while still being um, very intimately involved in the everyday workings. Um, I, I just think they're incredibly generous to sort of the people that they're working with. I think the biggest challenge is just resources. Um, I mean, the Free Theatre does not have any resources. You know, they're working with nothing. This play, Numbers, deals with statistics withheld from the public. These reveal the harsh realities that face people in Belarus. It's an anxious time for the Free Theatre's director, Vladimir Sherban. As a former director of the State Theatre, Vladimir knows only too well the penalty for working outside the state's control. 
Ну и там уже как бы государство включилось, как оно умеет это делать. То есть я был уволен из театра без, без в общем-то, причин. И все спектакли, которые шли у меня в этом театре и в других театрах, они были просто сняты из проката. In Europe, there is a certain level of democratic process. So the whole notion that there would be government in power, which is a dictatorship, is difficult to really grasp or imagine. The free theater needs to reach as many people as possible. In a climate of fear, how many people will have the courage to attend this illegal performance? With audiences secretly transported to the venue, the players prepare for another risky performance. Join me after the break to see how the audience responds to the challenging and disquieting performances of the Free Theatre of Belarus.